Well, I think it's about time I start looking into soft modding an original Xbox, but in order to do that, I'm gonna need to find a specific game. Either it's a 1.0 revision of Tom Clancy's Splinter Cell or Mech Assault or... Where is that light coming from? Actually, you'll just be needing this. Flash drive? Seriously? Yeah, a USB. You're in the end game now. Hello and welcome back to the Video Game Alwar, the series where we show you the process in repairing and restoring all things gaming. Today we'll go over how you can soft mod any original Xbox with just a flash drive. Previously, you needed a compatible game in order to mod your system. However, with the release of an exploit called Endgame, a disc is no longer required. We'll also go over how to add a custom dashboard to your modded system. So without any further ado, let's begin the procedure. For this mod, you'll need an original Xbox compatible flash drive, which translates to a flash drive that's under 1GB. In this case, the smaller capacity, the more likely it is to work. I'll have a link in the description for the ones used in this video, in addition to a list of all known compatible flash drives. You'll also need an Xbox to USB adapter so we can connect it to our system, in addition to a Windows-based PC so we can load the files onto our compatible flash drive. With all the materials in hand, let's start by downloading the required files. Start off by heading to the link in the description for the Xbox Soft Mining Tools Google Drive link. Download it using the button at the top right corner. Google may state that it can't check for viruses, simply ignore that and press download anyway. We'll also need an application called Fat Explorer so we can view and edit the contents of our Xbox formatted flash drive on a PC. Download the appropriate beta release for the type of system you're using. In this case I have a 64-bit computer, so I'll grab the 64-bit beta. Once downloaded, extract the Fat Explorer folder from its archive. Then create a new folder for the Xbox soft modding tool. Now copy its archive to the folder you just created, and extract the contents of the zip file inside of the folder, at which point you can banish both the Xbox soft modding tool and Flat Explorer archives to robot hell. With our two applications extracted and inside their own folders, let's format our flash drive for use on the Xbox. To do this, turn on your console, then navigate to the memory tab on the home menu. Now connect your flash drive to the USB adapter and insert it into any of the available controller ports. You should receive a message on your Xbox stating that the memory unit isn't working and has been erased. Go ahead and press OK on the pop-up as your flash drive is now formatted under the Xbox file structure. Head back onto your computer, then open the Fat Explorer folder and launch the Fat Explorer EXE. Upon running the app for the first time, you may be prompted to install the .NET framework if you don't have it installed already. Be sure to do so as the application won't work without it. After the framework is installed or you enter the app, connect your formatted USB into the computer. Upon doing so, Windows will share its distaste for the flash drive and give you a notification saying that you'll need to format the drive before you can use it. Be sure to click cancel on this window. You'll then be told that the drive is inaccessible. Press OK on this pop-up, and if Windows insists that you format it again, just exit out of the window. As due to the flash drive being formatted on the Xbox, we'll have to make sure we deny any attempts to format it on PC, or else we'll need to format it on the console again. Once you're inside Fat Explorer, click on the device tab where you should see your flash drive. Select it, then choose the option to load the device. You'll then be prompted to choose a drive letter to mount it to. By default it's X, which should be fine assuming you don't already have an X drive on your system. Now click on the big green button to mount your flash drive on the selected partition. You may get a notification to install the Fat Explorer drivers before you can mount the device. In this case, select install. It should only take a few seconds, after which you'll be taken to a window asking for a license. You can use the software for free by choosing the option to start a trial. Fat Explorer should now open a File Explorer window to allow you to transfer files between your computer and the Xbox's flash drive. Open the folder containing your Xbox soft modding tool files and navigate to the soft mod packages folder. Then open the endgame archive. Copy the helper and trigger folders along with the payload XBE file to the flash drive. Once copied, you can unmount the drive from your computer by heading back to the Devices section of Fat Explorer, then select the Close All option and click on the Close Unmount All button. We can now safely remove the flash drive from the computer and reinsert it into our Xbox via the adapter. 
To run the soft modding tool on your console, navigate to the memory section of the dashboard once again, and select the flash drive's memory unit. Your console should try to open the storage device, but freeze during the transition screen. This is good as it signifies that it's attempting to load the toolset. You should see the power LED on the console flash a set of colors, eventually loading into the Xbox soft modding tool. However, if it stays on the screen for more than 3 minutes without anything happening, turn out the system and try again. Once the system loads into the soft modding tool, you're officially in the endgame now. Hey! That's my thing! Press the A button on your controller to begin installing the installer. After it completes, your system will restart, followed by prompting you to press A again to begin soft modding your system. This process can take up to 5 minutes, so feel free to step away and do something else in the meantime, like taking a natural shower. After the soft mod completes, you'll be notified that a copy of your console's EEPROM has been saved to the internal hard drive. We'll be transferring that back up to your computer in a little bit, so for now press A on I understand. The tool will then inform you that the EEPROM file will be required in case you need to replace the hard drive in your console. Go ahead and press A again, where you'll be told that the soft modding process has been completed. Pressing A one more time will exit the installer, restart the system, and boot into the Xbox's new custom dashboard. Your system is now officially soft modded, however there's still a couple things we'll need to do before we're completely done with this process, beginning with backing up our console's EEPROM to our computer. Now because our system is soft modded, we no longer have to use a USB. We can instead transfer files over our local network using a file transfer protocol, aka FTP. To begin, connect an Ethernet cable running from your modem to your Xbox. You'll know that it's connected when you see an IP address listed on the system's dashboard. You'll want to jot that IP down as we'll need it to connect to the console from our computer. Speaking about a PC, you'll want to head over to yours and establish an FTP connection. There are multiple ways to do this, but I'll be using a free application called FileZilla for this tutorial. Within your software, you'll want to enter the IP address from your Xbox as the host. Then by default the username and password are both Xbox and all lowercase, and the port should be 21. If you're using FileZilla, you may get a warning, just press OK. Once connected, you should see the 6 partitions of your Xbox's hard drive. Our EEPROM backup is located under the E partition within the backup directory. Drag and drop the EEPROM folder from the Xbox's hard drive to your PC's desktop. Then, once it's finished copying, be sure to stash your backup someplace safe. Now, we should probably do something about that default dashboard that comes with the soft mining tool. It's not the worst thing in the world, but it's pretty basic. To solve this, the creator of the tool has compiled an extras disk that comes with a whole host of features, and the best part is that it's super easy to install. To do this, head down into the description for the link to download the extras disk ISO file. Then enter the extras folder and grab the provided zip file as well. Once downloaded, extract the contents of the extras disk attacher zip and open the extracted extras folder. Move the extras disk ISO file into this folder, at which point it's all ready to be moved over to your console. Connect to your Xbox via another FTP instance using the same information as last time. Once connected, enter the E partition and right click on the empty space. Then select the option to create a new directory and name it Games. From here, simply drag and drop your extras disk folder to the Xbox's game directory and wait for it to copy. After the files have finished transferring, we'll need to load the disk on our console by entering the system option on our dashboard, followed by the file explorer, then the E directory, the game directory, and finally our extras disk folder. Select the default XBE file by pressing A to launch the app. Once loaded, you'll be greeted by a menu that looks similar to the dashboard, but with a few different options. To install our new dashboard, navigate to the dashboards option, where you'll be presented with a list of dashboards you can install. If you're a fan of Aurora on the Xbox 360, I'd recommend XBMC for gamers as it has a similar interface. I'll be installing it for this tutorial, however feel free to choose any one you'd like. Selecting any dashboard will take you to a list of install locations. We'll want to install our custom dashboard to e-dashboard. Choosing it will give you a warning that it'll override any dashboard we have installed currently. Go ahead and choose yes. After which, your dashboard will begin to install. During the installation, it'll ask if you want to delete the old dashboard. Again, select yes. After the installation, head back to the list of dashboards, and scroll down to the MS Dashboards option, and install it. You'll want the stock MS Dashboard installed with your custom one as it's needed for some other homebrew applications. During the installation, it'll ask if you want to install the audio. This one is up to personal preference, as it's not required for it to work. Once it's finished installing, you can restart the console. If everything has gone to plan, it should load you into your custom dashboard of choice. If you chose XBMC for gamers, it'll ask you to set up the safe areas for your television and create a new profile to sign in under. 
I like XBMC for gamers as it has a lot of tools built right into the dashboard, such as by pressing the black button and entering settings. Then choosing the downloader option, you have immediate access to tons of other applications, dashboards, emulators, mods, themes, and homebrew right from your console. You can also update the dashboard by heading down to the updates tab and choosing the latest stable build. Congratulations as you have now successfully soft modded your original Xbox and installed a custom dashboard. As you can see, there's a lot of options for things you can do with a modded system with nearly an endless amount of choices. That's just about all for this tutorial, but before we wrap up, let's see this video's featured comment. This video's comment of the day was brought to you by Boozehound, who said, Bro, I found this channel from the 360 mod in 10 minutes video, and this channel goes hard. These intros and productions are effing awesome. Thanks for the comment, Boozehound. I'm glad you enjoy our content, as we have a great time making it. Hopefully, we can do this full time one day, and with all the overwhelming support like this, it might actually be possible. With that being said, if you enjoyed the video, consider dropping a like and making that subscribe button glow so that you don't miss any future content. And if you have any lingering questions, be sure to leave a comment or visit our official Discord server. Link below if you're interested in stopping by. With that, I'll see you in the next one.